okay, this adds an additional complication to the range equation. In this case, we're not going to require that the projectile lands at the same height that it is launched, but we'll let it land, we'll let it be launched at some height h above where it's, it lands. So it's launched with an initial speed of v naught at an angle alpha above the horizontal, it lands at an elevation h below its launch. How far does it travel horizontally? We have exactly the same kinematic equations that we always have for these ballistic problems. Acceleration is negative g in the y direction. There is no acceleration in the x direction. The initial x component of velocity is v naught cosine alpha. The initial y component of velocity is v naught sine alpha. The x component of velocity doesn't change, that stays constant. The y component of velocity changes because there's acceleration, so we have that additional term of minus gt. The x position changes linearly with time. The y component does not change linearly with time. There's the initial speed times time term, and then there's the acceleration term, one half gt squared. The way we're going to solve this is the way that we always do. Define the time to the landing, so that's basically the time that it is at height h below our launch, or if our launch is height h, we're going to find the time at which the height is zero, and then we'll find the range by plugging that time in to our x equation. We're just going to run the algebra through um, y naught minus h is the landing position. This is our arbitrary, uh, y naught minus h is the landing position. This is the position at any particular time. Here I've put h on, on the right side of the equation, so I've got e, 0 equals something. Now I've got a quadratic 1 half gt squared minus v naught sine alpha t minus h. This is a quadratic in t. We can solve this using the quadratic formula. a t squared plus b t plus c. The solution is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So negative b is positive v naught sine alpha v squared is going to be v naught squared sine alpha. 4ac is going to be 2gh, and then 2a is going to be just g. Notice what I've done here. I've removed the negative from the plus or minus. Why am I only taking the plus? The reason is this is the solution we want, the time after launch. The other solution is back here, time before the launch. That's the one that we get where the we use the negative. We're not interested in the negative, so we have only the one solution that's of interest to us, which is this one. Well, that doesn't look so bad. That's time, so we're going to take this time and we'll plug it into our x equation to find the actual range. So here's what we do. We've got our horizontal range, x equals x naught plus v naught cosine alpha t. Remember that we're solving for d, so we have d equals v naught cosine alpha t. This is our t that we plug in. Um, not a whole lot of simplification that we can run through here, but the only simplification we can do is to take the 1 over g out, which makes this display in a line a little bit better. But it's still not a horrible equation, but not really nice looking. Let's verify that this conforms to what we earlier derived for the range equation when the landing was at the same height as the launch. This should reduce to the special case. So what we do is we say where h equals 0, where it lands at the same height as it launches. So here's our starting equation. Plug in 0 for h. That only shows up in this term here. So now we have v naught over g cosine alpha times v naught sine alpha plus, what's this? The square root of v naught squared sine squared alpha. Oh, well this whole thing in this whole square root is just v naught sine alpha. So we have v naught sine alpha plus v naught sine alpha. Well, that's 2 v naught sine alpha. Now we have 2 cosine alpha sine alpha. Oh, that's just sine of 2 alpha. So that works when h equals 0, when it lands at the same height that it's launched. This fits our earlier range equation. Well, when we found the range equation earlier, we solved for what angle gave us the maximum range. Can we do that in this arbitrary case? Sort of. We're going to start with the same basic premise that the maximum value of the range occurs at the angle at which the derivative of range with respect to angle is zero. Now what I'm going to do to make this look a little simpler is I'm going to define this dimensionless parameter beta which is going to be a, a sort of a 
speed ratio. 2GH, the numerator, is the square of the speed that gives you height h if it fired straight up. So if you fire it straight up at, at speed that's the square root of 2GH, it'll reach a height h. To simplify our expression for d to something a little bit less nasty, so we start off with this. Our, we've got our factors of v naught, which can come out. Uh, so now we've got v naught in these two terms inside the parentheses, so we can bring that outside. So we get v naught squared over g times cosine alpha times this factor sine alpha plus the square root of sine squared alpha plus beta. This is a somewhat simplified version for the range. Now what we're going to do is take the derivative of this with respect alpha to see if we can find the optimum angle to give us the longest range. So here's where we go with that. We take the derivative of that with respect alpha. It's not very pretty. So I'm not going to step you through the algebra except to say that this is what you get. For our maximum d, optimum alpha, I don't see an analytical way to do this. I think we'd have to do it graphically or numerically. But let's check. Let's check for the special case where the launch and landing heights really are the same and see if this reduces to the formula that we arrived at before. So this is where h equals 0, otherwise known as beta equaling 0. So when beta equals 0, we plug in beta for here, uh, 0 for beta here, and here. And so this, the square roots now become square root of sine squared alpha, which is just sine alpha. So we have cosine of 2 alpha minus sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha. Well, cosine squared of alpha minus sine squared of alpha just happens to be the cosine of 2 alpha. So here we have cosine of 2 alpha plus cosine of 2 alpha. So we have 2v naught squared over g times cosine of 2 alpha, which is exactly what we got before with the range equation for the derivative of the range with respect to alpha when the launch was at the same height as the landing.